Deadlock is now out and in the hands of players, so here we are taking a look at the all-new, still-in-development third-person MOBA developed and published by the almighty Valve. Now I should probably put up a quick disclaimer and note that while I definitely enjoy this very niche approach of blending traditional third-person shooter gameplay and MOBA mechanics into a singular in-game experience, unfortunately I'm not very good at MOBAs. It's just not a genre I ever really play outside of occasionally playing Heroes of the Storm or Paragon back in the day. I'm coming at Deadlock here from the perspective of a casual player just looking to have a good time. That's really all there is to it. Deadlock is very much your standard MOBA. You have your traditional 5v5 PvP mode as well as a cooperative player versus AI mode, with the third alternative option being a single player versus AI private match mode. Then of course you have the training modes, which I didn't really get into. I spent my first few hours playing privately against AI. There are a lot of mechanics to get used to in any MOBA, and playing against AI without other people watching felt like the least embarrassing option at hand. I'm happy to say that the AI is actually reasonably well programmed. You have the option to scale the difficulty up or down using a number of preset options. I started with easy, then after a few matches worked my way up to normal, and then, then to the harder settings. Once I had achieved nominal competency, with around half a dozen or so starter characters, I swapped to playing the player versus AI mode primarily. I did dabble a bit with exclusively PvP, you know, put in a couple hours there, but I'm not quite confident enough in myself yet to fully commit to that. So most of the footage you'll be seeing will be from the player versus AI mode, which I played for a few dozen hours. So now that I have put in all that time, let's talk about specifics, shall we? I've played as pretty much all of the available heroes. There are currently a selection of 21 playable heroes, with what I am sure will be more on the way. I'm happy to report that each and every one of these heroes offer distinctly different weapon and ability kits, although you'll still be able to make substantial tweaks regardless of who you choose to play as. I was kind of surprised to find that there were no objectively terrible characters. I'm not trying to insult Valve in particular here, I just mean that with such a large playable cast, you usually have a few characters that simply aren't that viable compared to the others. And it's true that there are a few characters that I would argue are a bit too situational. There definitely aren't any glaring examples that just pop out. One of the problems that I've noticed a lot of MOBAs have, especially the lesser known ones, is that their shop AI is dog shit. I don't know why so many MOBAs are opposed to having clean, comprehensible shop UIs that don't require a post-secondary degree in order to understand and navigate, but it so often seems to be the case. Luckily, Valve has you covered here. Every item you can buy is marked as being either passive or active in nature, and if you hover over it, you'll even see a short description box with simplified text and context clues indicating how said item might be advantageous to you. You don't have to consult a D&D character sheet or watch hundreds of hours of YouTube tutorials to know what you need to know. Another UI element I quite like and I wish other games did more is how, when you're selecting a character to play, you can actually hover over their ability icons to preview video clips showing said abilities in use so you can actually see how your character plays. Every hero-based game should have this in 2024. I love it when I get to see this feature in use, so hats off to Valve again on this point. I'm not going to go into a deep dive on how the gameplay works here. Odds are, if you're watching this video, you already have at least a superficial understanding of how MOBAs work. You have five players on a team fighting for control of the map, slowly making their way back and forth through the enemy's defenses on a number of lanes simultaneously, while the enemy strives to attack your defenses as well. I've seen a number of reviews complaining that Deadlock's matches run far too long, I really have no idea what these people are talking about. Granted, the majority of my time has been in co-op, but I've played a fair amount of PvP also. My experience is that matches tend to last approximately 15 to 20 minutes at most. I've only had a few matches go much beyond 20 minutes. The longest PvP match I can recall was about 26 or 27 minutes, and even then, that was only because it was a very tightly contested game. I've never seen a match go to 30 minutes. So yeah, while I've seen articles claiming matches go on anywhere from 30 to 65 minutes or even 90, I'm sure that's technically possible, but I've never seen or heard of it, either from my experience or from hearing of my friends' matches. Deadlock fixes a number of minor quality of life problems I've had with a lot of MOBAs, which I'm sure diehards won't appreciate, but I as a more casually oriented player absolutely do. For one, traversal to and from spawn, or to and from the front line, is sped up enormously. You have these Bioshock Infinite-esque sky rails that allow for rapid traversal at any time. Every few minutes you also get this speed boost that basically triples the speed of your sky rail movement one way. So you never have to worry about wasting time spending, you know, a quarter of your game just walking to and fro. That does not happen here. No more of the whole walking all the way back to spawn or very slowly teleport back to spawn in order to access the item shop either. You'll find these little item shop vendor stalls located near certain objective zones. The only downside to these little stalls out in the world is that, unlike in spawn, you can still be attacked while standing here looking for items. 
The final major quality of life improvement I definitely appreciate is that spawn times are greatly reduced compared to other MOBAs. Instead of waiting 60 or 90 seconds to respawn, respawn times here in Deadlock are pretty quick, usually between 10 and 20 seconds, although the spawn delay will increase as the match reaches the endgame phase. So far I've pointed out just a few of the things I really like about Deadlock, it's time to turn our attention to the less admirable bits. For one, performance issues were evident initially, although Valve has been working hard to seemingly stamp these out. That said, server lag and rubber banding are still, sadly, quite a common phenomenon. Secondly, I'm not too keen on how Valve has designed their matchmaking system. In order to begin matchmaking, you can't just pick one single character to play as. Oh no. <laughs> Valve has obliterated the one picks, and instead created what is essentially a preferential character selection process, where you're mandated to pick at least three characters before being allowed into the public matchmaking system. Fortunately, you can prioritize one character as your top pick, a second character as your secondary prioritization, and then the third character can be, well, whatever. Personally, I'd prefer having the option to still solo lock whatever character I want to play as, and have the matchmaker just issue me a warning telling me that because I only picked one or two, finding me a match might take longer. I like the idea of recommending players pick three, and designing the system with that primarily in mind, but forcing players to pick alternate heroes they don't really want to play? I don't know. Doesn't seem like a great idea, but hey, I can live with it if that's the direction Valve wants to go. Visually, Deadlock's art direction is... interesting? I like the 1920s aesthetic, but I definitely don't like how washed out many of the colors appear to be. Valve is generally known for games that have a certain distinct visual flair, and this visually, for the most part, looks kind of shallow and lifeless. Maybe this will improve between now and when Deadlock fully launches on Steam, whenever that happens, but at the moment, I'm really not all that impressed. Deadlock has the potential to be an excellent MOBA, one that'll definitely do a good job bringing in both casual and competitive players alike. The obvious problem is, it definitely needs way more work before it's actually ready to launch. This definitely feels like a late alpha build. There's a fair number of missing assets, the gameplay mechanics are a bit scuffed, and the optimization and server stability are really all over the place. If you enjoy casual MOBA play as I do, Deadlock might be worth checking out. As a competitive game, I think it's way too early to tell whether Deadlock will pick up any momentum compared to LoL, or with Smite 2 releasing as a free-to-play game next year. I think a lot of this will depend on what the day one player base numbers look like and what kind of players ultimately decide to stick around long term. Valve has a history of supporting both competitive and casually oriented games, and usually for quite a long time down the road. All Deadlock has to do is not fall flat on its face like Artifact did, and we're fine. Based on the current internal alpha numbers, I'd say Deadlock's future is looking reasonably bright. At any rate, that's where I'm going to wrap it up for today. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to toss it a like and subscribe if you want to see more review videos like this one in the future. This is Warrior Dance signing out. Stay awesome and peace out.